Welcome back. Uh, today I want to highlight a few more of my thoughts on superstition and how I find it as an assault uh, on our autonomy and agency. I'd like to open up with a quote from Carl Sagan. Superstition and pseudoscience keep getting in the way, distracting us, providing easy answers, dodging skeptical scrutiny, casually pressing our all buttons and cheapening the experience, making us routine and comfortable practitioners as well as victims of credulity. That was a direct quote from his book, Demon Haunted World. Before we go any further, make sure you've liked the video and subscribe to the channel so that way you can get notified of when the latest content is coming out. Uh, also, if you're interested in supporting content like this and being a part of our growing community, consider joining Patreon by clicking the link in the description. Okay, so let, let's kind of jump into this a little bit. Um, here, here are my thoughts. S superstition undermines rational decision making, uh, pushing us towards uh, actions often based on fear, tradition, or critical or uncritical acceptance of unproven assertions. Uh, it often compels us to choose or reject relationships, uh, health treatments, or even financial opportunities based on auspicious signs rather than logic, evidence, and what genuinely benefits us and our communities. Um, I was guilty of this in nearly every area of my life. Most of my decisions, nearly all of my decisions, were not based on any logical reasoning. I'll share this in a later video, but a major part of my health uh, weight loss journey was realizing that I did not have a rational relationship with eating. I didn't have a reasonable relationship with eating. There was no purpose to it. I was seriously, you know, eating almost kind of like my, my, my dog does. Just there's food here, so I'm going to eat it. You know, whole nother story. But the point is that such reliance on superstition over reason erodes our sense of personal responsibility. Uh, we start seeing ourselves uh, as victims of fate rather than architects of our own lives. And yes, I'm not saying this happens for everybody, but it happens for enough people that this needs to be a conversation. It's actually quite fascinating when you think about it. The further away people move from a superstitious worldview, the more they seem to be able to connect their decisions to realities. Um, Consider confidence in one's abilities. Superstition attributes success and failure to luck or mystical forces, not effort, skill, or preparation. Uh, I once believed that I was merely a vessel attributing all my strengths and all my faults to something beyond me, in particularly my strengths, to, to anything that came um, any compliments that came. It was glory to God. I, I gave much of my own autonomy away so that it was no longer I who lived, but Christ who lived in me. I had crucified the deeds of my flesh and committed the desires of my heart to the things of God. All of my righteousness was just filthy rags and all my works was counted as dung. There was nothing good that dwelt within me. And who would I be? With, uh, if not for grace. It was only after deciding to reject such pitiful grace that I began to discover that none of those things were true for me and that I had been sleeping on myself. And recognizing my own capacity was a game changer for me. It showed me that my strength was sufficient for facing life's realities. It was a difficult place to come to, but it helped me realize that I actually don't need a savior. And it, and it wasn't just that I don't need a savior. It also healed me from this place of thinking. If, if someone doesn't come in my life and help me, I'm going to be broken forever. A superstitious mindset in many ways limits exploration and curiosity. It keeps us from questioning established norms and seeking new experiences. If you're busy pretending that all there is, is what you pretend to know, then you're really never seeking what there actually is. One of the beauties that I find of scientific inquiry is that the person who is making scientific inquiry is never pretending to know. They are always trying to know. They are engaging the unknown as opposed to dictating what the unknown is without ever engaging it. Um, See, since stepping away from superstition myself, 
I've been able to delve into subjects that I once thought were well beyond my grasp, and I'm now involved in a variety of innovative projects that I feel will help contribute to people progress. In other words, just the progress of people. Um, I thought I was doing that before, but man, hard sciences I was running away from, math I was running away from, those things. And again, I'm not saying this is everybody's ex experience. I, I don't I don't share on my channel to necessarily share everybody's experience. I share mine. I share my worldview, what I've seen. Um, and not in any way that I, where I suggest you have to share mine. But I just present it out there as something to think about. And I definitely uh, uh, know for me that in my superstitious days, I did not want to gra uh, I didn't want to gra uh, grapple with physics. I didn't want to grapple with uh, astronomy uh, or, or even computer science, which now I spend a great deal of my time in. Um, even now, I'm working on building a conversational learning platform utilizing artificial intelligence and virtual reality to create new ways to help people critically engage with information in the world around me. You can at me or visit my website to learn more information about that work. Um, superstition also constrains social and cultural progress. I don't even think this needs to be said. Uh, simply by supporting outdated norms and harmful practices in many cases. From justifying slavery to denying scientific truths, superstition has held back advancements in health, uh, health rights and environmental action. Uh, whether you're talking about women's rights, whether you're talking about climate change, um, whether you're talking about life prolonging research as a species, many times superstitious efforts have been put in place or efforts powered by superstition have been put in place to prevent those things or stall those things. Thankfully, we're, we're at a place in society where that's now finally starting to slow down. But I've done a video on why I think that's the case. Um. Also, it, it promotes dependency on ex external uh, authorities um, for guidance rather than fostering an independent and informed approach to life's challenges. Um, for me, breaking free from superstition allowed me to hone my decision making skills, improving my life in profound ways. Um, what you begin to find is when, when you place such a great dependency of your life on, on anything whether it be a, a thing that you imagine or a thing that you know to be true that that's approved by a thing that you imagine. Uh, for example, for me, you know, it's it's the external authority was God, but then also the external external authority was the pastors or the, the men of God, the women of God, the anointed ones, touch not my anointed who would have a word for me, <laughs> you know, and you begin to live your life by those things. But and that does impact your autonomy, but not only not only do those things impact your autonomy. I grew up in an incredibly superstitious family. So when you hear me say that I am anti-superstitious, you may want to consider the backdrop behind that. Um, I, I grew up with a family that literally, if you split the pole, some of you may not even know what that means, but just two people walking. And if one person walks this way around the pole, one person walks this around the pole, I grew up in a family where kids could get whoopings for splitting the pole that you could you you it was considered extremely disrespectful for having your hat on at the table or whistling in the house and God forbid if you accidentally open an umbrella in the house. This is why I often do sound the alarm that hey, religion is a problem, but it is not the problem. Religion is a tool that we've created. Superstition is not a tool. It's an inclination. It, 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 to me, it's almost an evolutionary vestigial organ uh, of something that was once needed and, and perhaps even necessary for for survival that is no longer needed anymore. So, so what's the takeaway? Embracing criticism, uh, embracing skepticism, Critical thinking and evidence-based reasoning doesn't just free us from the chains of superstition. It empowers us to make informed decisions, take responsibility for our actions, and live more autonomous lives. And so, yes, though you will see many of my videos, and, and some, of, some of the titles may seem a little alarmist to you, um, and that is because I am absolutely 
alarmed as a person who's recently come out, consider it like, consider it being like Matrix, uh, like Neo in the Matrix, you know, using your eyes for the first time. I'm absolutely alarmed at everything I'm, I'm seeing and how far we've been able to, or how long we've been able to drift in this, even, even at the damage that we've been able to, to uh, that, that we've actually caused uh, because of our superstitious inclinations. And I'm not using this in a way to overly condemn us as a species, but to, to, to introduce us and to normalize critical thinking. That's really my goal here is, is to say, yes, superstition is this enemy, but it's an enemy that you do not have to fight. It's an enemy that you do not have to kill. It's an enemy that you can simply make irrelevant by growing in your critical thinking. Um, embracing skepticism and curiosity and learning more about the world around you. I challenge anybody who believes in any superstitious thing, whether it's a religious superstition, a political superstition, a social superstition, relational, emotional, any superstition, the best thing that I can encourage you to do is, is to take that scientific inquiry and approach that superstition with. To literally look behind the curtain Check and see, go find it out, embrace your curiosity and, and, and see what the world is like. Find out if it is or if it's not. I encourage you to question, explore and trust in your abilities. Let's foster a more rational, empowered and autonomous society together. Thank you for watching and don't forget to like, share and subscribe for more insights. Until next time, keep questioning, keep exploring, keep rising.